If you compare the, what the actual job is worth, that's probably the lowest lead fee in the gyms group. So what was your thinking behind that? Look, Joel, being a franchisee, I think I understand and I, I come from a different point of view or perspective where I get it when the shoe's on the underfoot. So we try to make it as cost effective as possible. That was purely just to make it affordable for franchisees. It, it does cost a lot more than $50 to acquire a customer for such a high ticket item. But you want to make it affordable. It's very rare in business that you can come on board, especially in, in, in such a lucrative space as bathrooms, and have work from day one and be busy from day one for such a minimal startup cost. But in terms of lease fees, we just try to make it affordable for the franchisees and really want to give bang for their buck. So today joining me is Stephen. And Stephen's a young gun the gyms, bathrooms and resurfacing division of franchise law, but you've been involved in gyms for a while. So before we talk about the bathrooms and resurfacing site with business, we're actually talk about how you got involved with gyms, Stephen. Yeah, so thanks, Joel. My name's obviously Steven, Sue Samless. I got involved within the gyms group probably early 2020, potentially, 2022 or so, some, some, somewhere around there, in the electrical division. So I'm a, a bit of background about myself is I'm a licensed electrician and also a kitchen, bathroom and laundry renovator. Did that for, for a little bit and then kind of went, what's next? Noticed that there was no bathroom division and I have a really big, really big passion for bathrooms and renovating bathrooms and making them look Mickey Mouse. Um, obviously approached gyms group and gyms, uh, a lot of back and forth, a lot of planning and research and all the rest of it. And then um, we launched it in uh, February 2023. So just just over a year now. Yeah, because you've done a great job because um, do you want to just maybe explain a bit before going to a bit too much more as well? Let's get this term divisional franchise or out of the way because a lot of people outside mm-hmm. of gyms be going, well, what is a divisional franchise or? So do you want to explain what your role is and what that term means? Yeah, well, I think divisional franchise or as we know in gyms group probably refers to a master franchise or whatever they call it, you know, outside of the gyms group. I guess it's us to provide support, business support, HR support, marketing support, sales support to our franchisees. I, I'm available pretty much 24-7. Some of my guys, and they know that, they can call me any time with any, um, any issues or any advice they kind of need. And that's generally what we kind of provide as a divisional franchise or master franchise. Yeah, because you've really built the division from scratch. So, you know, and you're probably being a bit too humble there, but I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll pump you up a bit for what. If, if you're watching this, what Stephen's basically is starting, he's coming zero franchisees. He's taking bathrooms and resurfacing, which was, you know, it was always a service under any man and stuff, but then put it together. You've done all the branding, you've done all the website, you do a whole bunch of giveaways. You've got well, how many franchisees now in New South Wales? Uh, in New South Wales alone, we've got seven. Seven, yep. And how many do you have? Your one in Victoria and ha- one, one in Victoria, uh, one in Brisbane, one in Gold Coast, one in Hobart, with a few more in the works. Yeah. So just in over a year, you've grown the division of more than ten or twelve franchisees. That's an amazing achievement because Australia is a very franchising heavy country. There's like fourteen hundred franchise systems, and not many of them make it more than ten. So you've already beaten a large percentage of other franchise brands. So that's a real big testament to you. And I think you're underestimating the support you provide because you do a lot. Obviously, um, I spoke, I've spoken a lot of your franchisees and people who watch that on the podcast. And mm-hmm. anytime you shoot them a message or a call, we are back within five minutes. Doesn't matter what time of day. And that's the main thing that a lot of them love about it is because they've been former chippies or done it on their own. And just the support they keep saying from yourself is amazing because they didn't have that support previously or the other guys in the divisions where they're shooting messages to them and they could get something within five minutes or use each other's trades network and stuff like that. So I think it's a really important thing. And that's all set up from under what you've done. So I think it's great if someone's watching this, what Steve has done as a young young person in gyms, being a divisional franchise well, is not an easy role. So to do what you've done is fantastic. So if you're buying in with Steve, it, you know, I'm, this is from my experience being a 13 year gyms person. He's, he's done a fantastic job in his first few. So well done on that. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I think you hit the nail on the head there. We're just trying to provide and create that culture within our division. Um, we have WhatsApp groups where we encourage people to interact and share trades and build that kind of that culture within. Um, we have guys that share trades all the time and, and ask for advice. We have guys that even help out, give give other guys to chop out and whatnot, and they help where they can. But um, yeah, de- definitely provide as much support as you possibly can. Yeah, the people I've spoken to, like, um, you know, they're They'll probably watch some of the interviews if they're watching the sort of prospects, but um, they're really capable people. But I just think coming into the franchise, a lot of people say, well, why can't I just do it myself and come into gyms? But I'm speaking to a lot of people who have tried it themselves. And just the, how much easier it is once they get involved yeah. with gyms, with the brand and with all the stuff you provide, it just makes running a business way more enjoyable. And what it was. So maybe I'm going to start with that then first. So people who watch this, maybe have done stuff before for themselves or working with someone. What's the benefits of being coming into Jim's Bar into a service? Yeah, for sure. So we encourage, obviously, anyone that's a licensed builder to begin with or resurfacing. So building your own, it's a very, very costly scenario from your websites to your marketing, to your Facebook, to your Instagram, to your SEO. As I'm sure you know, it can get quite costly. And bathrooms is such a high ticket item with jobs starting from around the 18, 20 grand mark. 
So I think people really underestimate the cost involved in starting a business, but also starting a business as a bathroom renovator. It's a very, very saturated market, as, as a lot of other trades, trade divisions are. They're very, very saturated, very, very costly to acquire leads and clicks and all the rest of it, as you can imagine. So we do it at a pretty cost-effective way where, you know, as, as everyone knows, Jim's charges a fixed fee model, flat fee model. So the more you work, the more you jobs you win, the more leads you take, the more money you get to keep in your pocket at the end of the day. It's a great point. Yeah, it's a big common misconception I deal with all the time on the sudden that why would I give Jim's 30% or 40%? But that's not the case. And the guy earning maybe earning over 200 grand or the guy turning over a million dollars pays literally the same fee. The only thing that changes is the lead fee. And the lead fee is not that much depending quite, you know, with your division as well, you wouldn't need that many leads to, to convert jobs. So um, it's a no-brainer. From the marketing cost point of view, I think um, if people have tried running a business before looking at this, they will know, as you said, website, SEO, Google ads alone, you know, it's far more exceeds the fees. Once you get all the other stuff that's involved. So with you mentioned the marketing stuff. You mentioned a bit about support. What else is involved in the studies or what else do they get for that sort of money they pay each month? Yeah. Well, your fees are broken up into a few sections. So obviously, like Joel mentioned, you have your lead fees. But I mean, you have your franchise fees, which essentially, I guess, gives you access to the gym's group and gym's bathrooms and being a franchisee with a territory holder. You have your marketing fee, which is quite small. We, we charge $530 a month as a marketing fee. As I'm sure you know, you would know and anyone in the space that w- would know or anyone that's dabbled in digital marketing or paid marketing would know that it's not all that much money. So we uh, we invest quite a bit of our own money into the fund and, and into our development to, to grow. So that, that's what they get for the marketing side of things. Your lead fee is quite cost effective. We a lot of research into, into lead fees, into what other people are charging them. You know, our lead fees are $59. So for $59, you get to get access to a lead, you know, to potentially win a 20 to 60 grand job. It depends on obviously what the client wants. That's a great point. I was going to stop you there because that's a really good point. So the lead fee generally in gyms we work off, it's generally 7 to 10% of the average job, but in bathrooms, that's far obviously cheaper than what the average job in bathrooms is. So why did you set it so low? Because it's obviously, because when you compare it to what the actual job is worth, that's probably the lowest percentage lead fee in the gym script. So what was your thinking behind that? Yeah, for sure. Look, Joel, being a franchisee, I think I understand and I, I come from a different point of view or perspective where I, I, I get it when the shoe's on the underfoot. So we try to make it as cost effective as possible. Um, that was purely just to make it affordable for franchisees. Um, you know, it, it does cost a lot more than $59 to acquire a customer um, for, for such a high ticket item. But we want to make it affordable. So, you know, very, very, it's very rare in business that you can come on board, especially in, in, in such a lucrative space as bathrooms and have work from day one and be busy from day one for such a minimal startup cost. But in terms of lead fees, we just try to make it affordable for the franchisees and really want to give bang for their buck. And what are some common questions then? So people, you obviously, you know, you do a lot of um, Zoom calls and, and stuff with prospects. So what are the common questions that keep coming up? How did you want to answer them in this call? A lot of questions. I mean, we do, we do seem to get, it seems too good to be true a lot. But it, it really is. We, we try to simplify it as much as possible. Um, in terms of common questions, I think that we answered a few of them in, in the sense of, um, is it a percentage on turnover? No, it's not. We charge a fixed flat fee. We had a franchisee in Sydney in six weeks, I believe, turned over around two hundred and fifty odd thousand dollars from some, from some, you know, bathroom. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is six a lot. Weeks. It, was... <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, in, in you know, in secured contract work. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times what we what we get is actually, can, can we do kitchens? Can we do laundries? And while we don't advertise for it, a lot of the times you know, what happens is our, our guys come on board, we're licensed builders, so we can undertake any work that's, you know, a kitchen, bathroom, or laundry. So we do the bathroom, we do it well, and they obviously then go, hey, can you also do our kitchen? Can you do our laundry? Can you do this? Can you do that? And absolutely. As long as they're lic- we're licensed and insured, which we are, they absolutely can quote for that. I was going to say, what's the average conversion rate on your lease with franchisees? Because I think we always hear the brand, you know, anybody says the gym's brand, the gym's brand, but how does it actually relate to real business terms? Is it, a, you know, it might sound like an obvious statement, but does that mean that, you know, independent to a gym guy, the gym's guy is more top, they're going to win out in the boat a little? Is that from your sense of it all? Yeah. So, I mean, we, ha- we have gotten a fair few times, you were a little bit more expensive than the competitor, but obviously we went with you because of the name, because of the brand, because of the trust and recognition. Um, we do get that a little bit. Although we are very, very competitive from what I can see. The conversion rates, they, they vary a lot. They can vary. Our conversion rates don't need to be as high as other divisions. I mean, for instance, for, for round figures sake, if we provide a franchisee with 10 leads, 
if they convert three or four of those, they're pretty busy. Like to, to manage three or four bathrooms a month for one person is quite a lot. Yeah, and that's a really good point. And I was also go back a little bit before on to say as well, that's too good to be true comment because we do hear that a bit. And what I'll say, we have people in training who are the same sort of thing, real skeptical, it sounds too good to be true. And the same thing I'll say to them is go to the YouTube channel, go to the, the podcast, find the, find the bathrooms and research these interviews we've done. We've interviewed a couple of your franchisees. We don't edit anything of those, listen to all in full. You can hear from the horse's mouth as well. And also come to our training. I think we should mention that the training partners are free. So the partners don't have to pay. So if you're ever working in a partnership, your partner can come in and watch. And also as well, with training, you don't require a contract to sign before coming to our training, which is extremely unusual in the franchising world. Everyone requires you to sign a contract and then they'll tell you everything. Yeah. We're the other way around. So we've got more than 2,000 videos on the YouTube channel. You can see our training. So what you're watching with Stephen right now listening, you can also check that if he needs a bit more to help you get across the line. But I was going to say as well, from your perspective with your, maybe you mentioned about WhatsApp group, I have seen some photos online about your meetings and stuff. So maybe you've got an outline about what sort of stuff you talk about meetings and, and how important that is to the group. Yeah, so I, me personally, I've invested a lot of money, Joel, in um, self-development and sales and communication and all the rest of it. So I try and pass on what I know and what I paid for onto the guys. We hold regular meetings via Zoom or in person. I try and get the, the guys around and we can do sales, you know, sales courses and sales sessions where we try and um, educate them on different scenarios and, and how to essentially close a deal because... I think we are a little bit different to every other gyms division out there. We, you know, we are a very, very high ticket item. It's not easy to to sell an 18, 20 grand bathroom. So with the right training and the support, we, our guys get it done, which is good. But that, that, that's what we do from a division point of view. Um, like I said, we, we're very, very accessible. And those regular meetings really help the guys and really motivates them to go out there and, and quote the next couple of jobs. Yeah, and the people I've interviewed from your division seem really switched on. They're always husband and wife team, which as well. So you are doing this as a partnership. It's a great business to do together i think um anthony and uh, his, his, his wife they started doing the business together as his bathrooms and with the young family as well the flexibility they enjoyed was um, really really important for them so maybe do you want to talk about maybe the lifestyle or the, or the family benefits as well that come of it yeah for sure joel i mean it, there are there is a lot of free time i guess in in terms of how you set up your set up your business i mean we have certain franchisees that are that are, are purely project managers so they'll come on board you know, they'll, they'll, they'll take on four or five jobs at a time and they'll manage them and they're not, you know, on the tools, so to speak. And then we have other guys that really like getting their hands dirty and, you know, get it, getting on the tools. And they obviously handle a little bit less, but they're working. So in terms of lifestyle, it, it is it, is, it can be pretty flexible and very lucrative for the work you, and the hours you put in on site. It can it can be very, very lucrative. I mean, you go out, you go out there as a builder, you can obviously talk to the customer, make sure the job's on track and on schedule and on budget. And other than that, you are managing trades and all the rest of it. What thing qualifications you mentioned? Is it all builders coming to you, or what sort of people uh, from backgrounds can can actually do gyms, bathrooms, and services? Yeah, so obviously with resurfacing, it's an unlicensed trade, so we can have anyone that comes on board. You know, spray painting experience is preferred. Um, although we do have systems and processes in place where we have trainers that can train you and and stuff like that for resurfacing. In terms of renovations, we need licensed builders. Everything we do is is you know by the book and completely legal. So. We try and preach that to our customers as well that, you know, all our guys are licensed, insured, police checked, and obviously homeowners eligible as well, which is very important. A lot of, a lot of consumers don't actually know about that. Um, but licensed builders is obviously the biggest question we get. And yes, absolutely, we need licensed builders. And that's all we can, that's who we can recruit only. What are the licensed builders feedback? Because obviously building's a tough game, getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And if you're yeah. a building company now, like unfortunately, it's pretty pretty dicey and stuff so is there something where some you've had some builders maybe out there and building company they're like i just don't want to deal with it anymore and they come and do this and find it more enjoyable what's the transition like being from the builders coming into jim's bathroom yeah so we actually encourage people that have gone on their own or are on their own to bring their brand with us and get the benefits of jim's bathrooms we do get it quite a bit that it's just it's a lot easier to get work with us they're not having to worry about where their next job's coming from they know the leads are always going to be there and the customers seem to just that trust factor with us, they seem to convert jobs a lot easier as they would if they wild themselves. You know, uh, if, you're, if you're competing with another company, you know, nine times out of 10, if the price is right, they'll go with gyms. Also, yeah, you made a good point. And also, I think the gyms group uh, work guarantee as well. The customers is always a good out of peace of mind, which a lot of um, independents cannot offer. You know, so if something goes wrong with the job, practice or whatever, it's not responding, people can go to the call center, as you know, and just, you know, the gym can get involved and put a little yeah. bit of support there as well. And that's what you pay that extra money for. If that's the case on your job. But as you said, most of the jobs are quite competitive in pricing. And I was going to say then, services, what are the services? Obviously, you mentioned bathroom renovations, you mentioned laundry. 
Is there anything else on the renovation side that they, they can do all? Yeah, I mean, look, we advertise for, as a division, we, we do bathroom renovations. Uh, so that, you know, consists of, you know, uh, commercial renovations, NDIS bathroom renovations, accessible bathroom renovations, uh, complete custom budget bespoke, whatever it is, we can handle it. And we tailor it to the customer's needs and wants and, and budget, obviously. And then resurfacing, we obviously, the resurfacing of baths, basins, wall tiles, um, and all, all those sorts of things. And you mentioned as well, a franchise that turned over 600, 250 grand in six weeks. Now, uh, you know, this, how much revenue does he generate in, has he done a whole year in Jim's bathrooms or how much revenue did he generate? He hasn't, he hasn't done a whole year yet. But Is he happy um, with that? Is he happy with all he's been doing? Yes, he's very happy. He's very, very happy. Um, he's on track to turning over a million dollars. Is it hard? Uh, with us but yeah he's definitely happy and, and on track to, to hit that million dollar mark it's a great story you know that's a, it's an amazing achievement to do that in um such a short amount of time and i think it's an absolute um no brain i was going to say as well then from, a, from the customer side of point of view you, you outlined some benefits but maybe what's the actual process for customers with bathrooms because obviously they might see the quote request they you know, book a thing with jim's bathrooms maybe what's how do you guide them from there yeah, so obviously our franchise will get a notification saying your customers put a, a request through, and we encourage all our guys to call them, call the customers within you know two minutes, two to ten minutes, book in an on-site uh, on-site consultation where they'll discuss you know the needs, the wants, the budgets, and all the rest of it. They'll design something and tailor it to their needs, whether it's a three D design, a two D design, whatever the customer kind of needs. Provide a quotation if they're happy with the quotation, get contracts and and all the rest of it in place. Um, obviously we're we're uh, master builders association members. So we we provide all the contracts through them. The clients usually like like to see that, and then they start get a start date in mind uh, in mind, and they lock it in and go from there. I was going to say as well um, with um, your franchisees. You mentioned marketing before. We talked a little bit about that, but do you want to just talk a bit more about marketing that's in place and how it's pretty much a handoff thing for them, and you take care of it. Just maybe talk about all the things you do that go into the yeah, company. yeah. So look, we, we just want builders to come on board and be builders and build beautiful, nice bathrooms and provide exceptional customer service. That is all we require and we handle the rest. In terms of marketing, we you know, we do do a lot. We, we are only about, you know, 15 months old or so. We have a really good social media presence, I believe. Uh, we had a lot, a lot of interaction on our on our Instagram, on our Facebook and all the rest of it, which is good. And we, we do a lot of paid advertising too. So Facebook, Instagram, we do, we, do, we, we trial and test a lot. And I think we've come a long way. Um, in, in the 15 months, we do a lot of uh, organic work as well. So if a franchisee comes on board with us to set them up, we do a lot of local area marketing organically. So we'll set them up with, you know, landing pages and whatnot for their local area, Google My Business to get, encourage them to get reviews. We even actually pay our franchisees to get reviews and, and for social media posts because it's so important and detrimental. So we do a lot of that as well. Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. We, we, we just handle everything. We just need good builders that want to be builders and we will handle the rest. Yeah, you've also been on TV, so you've done the Space Invaders series, yep. which is really filming again. So there's a national TV thing, which you guys have been quite involved with, yep. which is fantastic. And also the, um, the big giveaway, the 20K yep. giveaway, which is a lot of work for you guys. That's a fantastic thing as well. So you're doing a lot in for, yes. for, your, as a, for your franchise. That is. Yeah, the giveaway was really good. Um, it was... Um, but well, you know, completely above board and legal. We had to get all the permits yeah. and and all the rest of it. And um, yeah, it was a really really exciting time. And we're looking at doing another one soon, shortly uh, this year. Mate. It was really really yeah, it was really exciting. And the winners were really deserving. And we're glad to get that done for them. And um, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, and Sheree Barber from Renault from Profit and from Space Invaders love you your guys as well. So she always gives good feedback. And Gibbs Bathrooms doing a lot of the tiling and stuff for um, the season as well. So um, and he helped out with a bunch of things. So thank you for that. I was going to say as well, what's characteristics then should someone be asking themselves about? You know, they might like the sound of this. What sort of person, in your opinion, does well in Jim's bar? Or what sort of fights maybe or what sort of questions maybe should they ask themselves first? Yeah, I think it just, Joel, it comes down to just providing good customer service and obviously being a capable builder. We just we tend to find that the people that just go above and beyond for their customers do exceptionally well. We handle absolutely everything. So they don't actually need to do all that much other than show up on time, quote the work, and, and win the work. That's all we require. So if you're a capable builder, does good quality work, we'd love to have a chat and we can get you we get you busy from pretty much day one. Let's talk about quickly about the, the training side of it. So everyone has yep. to come to the Jim's head office in the platform from sitting now. So maybe you want to talk about that real quickly about the training and what's, what's involved in it. Yeah, so three days generic franchisee training at Mirrorbark. Um, it's and I, it's really I really encourage it because it's so good. You, you meet so many different people from all walks of life, all different divisions, and you get to mingle and chat and eat together and sit together. And it's really really good to hear everyone's stories. And they usually come back and they're so excited and ready to go. Um, so really really good initiative. And you know 
Further to that, we also offer sales training. So they can come on board with us and we can actually set them up with, you know, 12 hours of professional sales coaching with a professional sales coach if they feel like they need it, um, the offer's there. Because, you know, you are selling such a high ticket item as mentioned, they need to have those skills and, you know, assets available. So we, we offer that as well. I should have a point of view. Absolutely. And the marketing stuff, I just want to get back to the marketing. Even though you guys yeah. do a really good job with social media, if Frank actually wants to get in, do their own social media, do videos and stuff, they're allowed to do that as well. Yeah, they are. They are allowed if they want to. We encourage it from a national level. We are very heavy on social media. We invest a lot of our own money into, into social media, the boosting posts and whatnot. And anything they post, we will upload and credit them. And we, nine times out of 10, we'll actually put money behind the post and get it out there. So we, we find that the traction, we get a lot of traction. So we encourage it from a national point of view. If they really, really want to do it from a, um, a local point of view, they can. But why would you when we, all we need is just send the photos in and we'll just post them and you need money behind them. Yeah, sure. back, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. No, that's no, it. And bathrooms is such a crucial one with, with social media, especially Instagram. Everyone looks at renovations and yeah. stuff like that. It's probably the perfect division for Instagram as well. Now, Steve, with um, with your division, you want to explain to people maybe territories. So territories, people can go. What's you know, how does that work and all that sort of stuff. So, as the territory sort of work, um, do you want to explain it for people? Yeah. So, Jim's Group is probably the fairest franchise um, system that I've seen. I mean, you, obviously you have a territory, so it could be anything. It could be a suburb. Obviously, you have first right to any work in that territory, given that you are taking leads. Although we don't restrict you from working citywide, you can work anywhere you want and take work anywhere you want. So a lot of our guys um, over time now, we're starting to see it now, are restrict, uh, you know, taking back the area for work-wise, as, you know, travel and whatnot. So Yeah, back to territory island, you're back to the, like, where it yeah, back to, you know, they might be, you know, 15Ks from their house or so because they're, pr- they're pretty busy and they don't want to drive further out or there's no need to drive further out. It's one of those divisions that we we have, we have do have a lot of, we, we do have big areas or zones that people cover because, you know, you'll, you'll drive for a 20 or 30 grand job. So uh, that's that's what, that's what we see from our end. Yeah, and also, do you want to explain people that maybe gyms online? Because gyms online, you mentioned, which is territory branches, they can decide, you know, how far they work. But um, you actually talk about what else can they do in gyms online to benefit yeah, so Gym Line is um, it's a uh, you can go in, you can set your you set your work hours, turn your leads off and on. It's like I like to call it the Gym's Uber. You just turn your leads off and on, and you get them as you want. And you can you can you know if you're on holidays, you can you can upload your work to your holidays, so you're not getting leads and all the rest of it. So you can set your maximum leads, minimum leads, and all, and all that. So it's really really beneficial for the for the guys. And for the new franchisees you start with, you what's their what's the best thirty day plan for them? What would you sort of say? All right, someone's watched this and obviously has a meeting with you. And then what could you tell them maybe the first 30 days to expect? What are some things they need to do to get their business going? Yeah, so your your first 30 days, what we do is, so we we know a franchisee is coming on board in a certain area. We'll tend to kick in their marketing campaigns two weeks prior just to get a bit of traction there. And then once they come on board, we we like to have a little little bit of a list of leads that they can contact free of charge. Obviously, the unservice report, we'll send it to them. And they're they're free to contact contact each client to see what they can get from that. We had, a, we, we had a franchisee in Melbourne. He started with us recently and he, I think we, he had about 250-odd clients to call. So it's one, of, it's one of those things that it, it's good because a bathroom generally isn't going to get done in two weeks or so. So a lot of those a lot of those leads are still live and still active. So they can expect that. Um, they can expect work to come through. Uh, we, we, we like to think that we're pretty good at what we do in terms of lead generation and the rest of it. So we can um, get them pretty busy pretty quick. The bad thing if it maybe mentioned to people that we show is a franchise prospect can go to you and say, can you show me the work that's been in my area or that's been missed? So that gentleman in Victoria started with obviously an unserviced labor report we can run and yep. people can look at that before, you know, making a decision to actually vet the claims about, yeah, this, this, there is a lot of work. You actually show directly from the gym system, leads taken, unserviced leads in their area that's available to them. So it's all from our system and that's all a good way to be able to verify yeah, exactly. There was a, yeah, like I said, there was about two hundred and forty-four um, bathroom renovation leads. So, if you know, if you average it, average it out, at you know, uh, we'll be conservative at eighteen thousand dollars a bathroom. It's quite a lot of money left on the table. Yeah, because what happens is like with the social media stuff, people you always got to put presence in yourself. Well, and you post that on the Jim's Group page, and they think it's in Victoria, and then yeah, they call up, and there's no franchisee, so that's that's why yeah. the unserviced leads comes. But yeah, there's a lot of potential. And, what about expansion plans, Steve? Stephen, so you're only in, um, you've got Victoria, you've got Queensland, you've got New South Wales, but I think to- Hobart and Sydney got one coming on all of a sudden. Yeah, the yeah, we already have someone in Hobart. Yeah. Uh, so so he's, he's tracking along in, in Hobart and potentially looking at a second area. Oh, wow. Um, but we, yeah, we, we do have the uh, the East Coast covered. We, we, are, we are streaming for franchisees um, in Victoria. Um, we, we have a lot of work there that needs to be serviced. Um, so, yeah. There's a heap you just see in the unserviced 
How many yards of service did the main big tour? Uh, I believe it was about 240 odd so from oh. you know, J- June to June to May, um, you know, with zero dollars spent on advertising. Exactly. And that's the point for people to notice. You're not even advertising in Victoria, and that's that happened. So, what, what about WA South Australia? So, you need people about? Yeah, so so South Australia and, and Perth is what we're looking at. Um, if anyone's ready or listening or wanting to take that leap, we are we are looking for guys out there. Um, and I can get it get them busy busy pretty quickly. I was going to say, yeah, the great thing for people taking that up, they can already ask you about service they look for. And I'll be the first one there. It's going to get a big traction as well because you guys have a little bit signage as well. I should mention that. Yep. When you come on board, you guys look them up signage, uniforms, all that sort of stuff, and the signs looks fantastic. Yeah, we spend a lot of time and effort and money in you know getting the the brand right. We feel like we're a pretty bespoke brand, so we try and perceive ourselves that way with the branding and the vehicles and the signage and even the uniforms. So they get a really good kit when they sign up with us. And what, what what sort of maybe a story from you that stands out? You mentioned the guy turned up two hundred fifty k in six weeks, which is amazing. But is there anybody on maybe somebody's come on board who maybe maybe been a bit of struggling before, and then you know, since been you guys have maybe turned things around? But what's someone that stands out to you, Mike? Uh, well, something that stands out to me is we had a franchisee recently speak speak to myself and say, David, even if I wanted to leave Jim's Group and go on my own, there's no possible way we I could compete with with what with what I pay with you guys. It's just it's not feasible. That's probably, that's, that's probably a feel good moment, you know, in terms of what we've done around the country. Um, just the fees that we charge is so minimal compared to what you can make that it just doesn't make sense to do it on your own or just to just to go solo. It just makes no sense to, to me, to be honest. One hundred percent. I think that the um the fee, unfortunately, franchise gets that general perception. It's thirty percent or forty percent of gross revenue or whatever it is, and we've got, we've got to keep hammering this point. But um, yeah, it's yeah. well, why try to mine it? But it's this flat fee model. And you look at the package of what you get from the value that one, the marketing alone, you're getting way more value in the marketing beyond the fee that plus you get the support, the sales, you know, all that sort of stuff on top of it. It's it's crazy the value that people get. I don't realize it until they sit down with you. And I think that comment about sales still needs to be true is a, a relevant one. But what people don't know about Jim in general is that he just wants growth. So we have around 200,000 unserviced leads every year and he does not like that. So he just wants more franchisees to come on. It's not a big up for more franchisees on his back because we've got the work. You just mentioned 250 unserviced leads in Victoria and you haven't even spent $1 on advertising that. It's amazing how the brand can get that work. Yeah, and it's a testament to our, 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 all our organic work as well. We do a lot of, uh, we spend a lot of money in um, organic work and, and we want to, you know, obviously we have plans to be the biggest bathroom renovation company in Australia in the next coming years. And I think we'll definitely get there. We just need good guys on the road. And like I said, the marketing support and, and the leads and all the rest of it will come. Absolutely. I think it does, look, it doesn't hurt even if they're not sure about it, just to come to the training itself and, um, you know, but it, Artists can come for free, but obviously I speak to you when they do it as well. And if someone's watching this, maybe they want to go further to you, Steve. What, what do they have to do? Yeah, so you can go to jimsbathrooms.com.au or call one three one five four six, fill out the form, and then we'll, we'll get in touch and have a chat from go from there. Because that old you, Steve, you're only thirty, aren't you? Or younger? Uh twenty eight. Twenty eight. So it's the youngest division on Jim's Group history, almost. That you're definitely the youngest yeah. one at the moment. So you know, Star Steve Martin at twenty six. Very humble fellow, Steve, but he's a, he's a, he's a guy because um, it's not easy to do what he's done. And as I said, most systems don't actually get more than 10 franchisees is in the existing Australian yes. franchise of statistics in general. So you're already mm. top five, top 10% in terms of how many franchisees you put on. So well done on that. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that. We had a franchisee in um, Brisbane that um, actually mentioned that and, and said, um, they'll toss it up with a few different options. And he said, I actually went with you because, because you were young. Um, yeah. And obviously, you know, you're up to date, you, you, know, you know what the go is and you're hungry and all the rest of it. So that was actually pretty funny. It's not a bad comment because um, franchising, I go to a lot of these expos and we and stuff, but yeah, it can be quite old industry. So where's, yeah. the next, where's the next young guns coming through? And they seem to be only coming through generally in the food space. You're probably one of the youngest guns in the home services space, you know. So well done on that. You've done a fantastic yeah. job. And I think, um, obviously, I'm biased because I'm with Jing's group and stuff, but I would say to people... Get on to Stephen, get a list of your franchisees, which are current, and you can call them, which is the other thing as well you can do. Check out the podcast, check out the YouTube channel, and jump on a Zoom. Because I think um, 250 grand revenue in six weeks for that guy, and I think he's made a lot yeah, of that. It's incredible. So well done on that. Yeah, for sure. Incredible. And like like like, like you said, Joel, I think being young plays plays a good part. You know, We know what works. Um, we're up to date with trends and, and all the rest of it. Yeah, and, and the older generation, if they want to come in, they can leverage up that. Of course. Make, make make it easy. But I was going to say as well, how do you manage your time, Steve? Because you do a lot of big stuff. What's maybe some time management advice to the people? How do you do it? I'm looking at my whiteboard now. So I allocate certain days for certain things. Um, and then obviously anything pressing or, or that's an emergency, I, I tend to do quite quickly. 
but yeah, I, I manage it in um, certain days of certain tasks, and, and that's how I tackle my, tackle my time. And what's your best business books? Because you obviously invest a lot in personal development. What's the yeah. best maybe course? Or what's the best thing that you've done that you recommend maybe friends and um, just people in general? Yeah, so one book, I, I would say Good to Great. I like that. So Good to Great's a good book. That's the Jim Carl um, one, isn't it? Yes, correct. Yes. Um, and then obviously, I do I do listen to a lot of podcasts. I think um, I do like the Frankie Lee podcast. Yeah, right. I think, yeah. yeah, I She's think there's a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of hidden gems in there, and, uh, and that's probably the only podcast I listen to. I feel like a lot of people listen to, you know, five, six, seven different podcasts, but if you just have, you know, one or two or three that you listen to, you can you can get some good stuff out of them. I think Frank, you'll be wrapped with that. Yeah, you interviewed Jim ages ago. So I uh, did. Yeah, I did. Even know that. Yeah, yeah, ages ago, he reached out. I'll be a year and a half. So yeah, oh, really? That. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of his stuff. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Steve. If Thomas will let more, that to do is. Literally, one through eight, five, or six, or click the link in the podcast description. And if you're not sure about it, it doesn't hurt just talking to Stephen because you know you could be like that gentleman who's saw him give the revenue in six weeks, which is quite amazing. So, well done on that because you obviously create the business suit for him to do that. So, it doesn't hurt to inquire who knows where they might may end up. For sure, definitely. We, yeah, we, we need more more renovators on the ground. That's sure. what we need. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate your time today, mate. Thanks, Joel. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.